Good day, everyone. You are welcome to this week's Business and Investment Tips program, a production of Christ Church Radio. My name is L. D. G. Abo, an investment professional. This week, the focus is on the review of the CBN MPC's considerations. The Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee had its first meeting of the year last week. Monday and Tuesday, 24th and 25th January 2022, to discuss recent global and domestic developments. The MPC is the highest policy making committee of the CBN and is composed of an 11 man committee, including the CBN governor. The MPC meeting holds bi monthly, with five more meetings to come this year. The MPC voted unanimously to hold rate constant. Monetary policy rates MPR at 11.5%, asymmetric corridor at plus 100 basis points, minus 700 basis points around the MPR, cash reserve ratio at 27.5% and liquidity ratio at 30%. Expanding on the key rates, while these indicators can seem confusing, it is important to understand them because they affect us as consumers, depositors and investors. The MPR is the interest rate at which the CBN lends to commercial banks. The MPR is the benchmark against which other lending rates in the economy are pegged. It is also used as an instrument to control inflation in the economy. Though the MPR has been ineffective in recent years, the rate has been used to signal CBN's intentions. Cash reserve ratio is the minimum amount banks are expected to retain with the CBN from customer deposits. This implies that out of every 1,000 Naira deposit collected by the banks, 275 Naira is expected to be with the CBN. Effectively, the bank can only transact business and earn income with only 725 Naira out of the 1,000 Naira. Liquidity ratio is the ratio of the bank's liquid assets, which includes cash and government securities, to its liabilities, which is mainly deposits. This is to ensure the banks are able to meet with short-term obligations, that is, ability to pay back your money anytime you request. The asymmetric corridors are used to determine the following. The standing deposit facility rate, this is the lower band, minus 700 or 7% 7 around the MPR, which is the rate at which the banks place funds with the CBN, 4.5%, but daily deposits are currently capped at 2 billion. This means any excess placed by the banks with the CBN will not attract interest. The standing lending facility rate at 12.5% depends on the upper band plus 100 basis point or 1% is the rate at which banks borrow from the CBN. What were the major considerations of the CBN? These were the major considerations that determined the MPC's decisions on key policy rates. 1. COVID-19 pandemic. The MPC admitted that the pandemic is still affecting economic recovery, hereby encouraging the government to intensify efforts to ensure most Nigerians are fully vaccinated. This shows that the CBN will be mindful of any major rate hike given that the economy is still in recovery mode. 2. Inflation rates. The MPC expressed their concerns on the impact of insecurity on food inflation due to reduced farming activities in food producing areas. They believe that the recent rise in inflation in December to 15.63% is temporary as they expect that inflation will continue to fall. This also points to the fact that the MPC will not be in haste to raise the MPR to curb inflation, given that insecurity impacting food production is not within the purview of the monetary policy. 3. Petrol subsidy. The MPC noted the various discussion on the removal of petrol subsidies and suggested a stepwise and gradual approach to reduce the impact on transportation and energy prices. The committee also highlighted the need to support the takeoff of private refineries to reduce the price of domestic consumption and demand for FX. The commencement of operation by Dangote Refinery in Q3 2022 will be a major relief to the CBN due to the potential reduction in FX demand. 4. Exchange rate. The committee noted the dwindling oil sales proceeds despite the rising crude oil prices and attributed this to low remittance to the consolidated revenue fund 
and advised the NMPC to address this irregularity. We feel this may be attributed to the payment for subsidies, which is deducted from source as well as low oil production levels. Also, the MPC noted the improvement in remittances and advised the CBN to sustain the incentives. This will improve FX supply, which will aid the CBN's demand management strategy. Five. Government's debt profile. The MPC expressed concern about the federal government's high debt profile and the implication on fiscal sustainability. The committee emphasized reducing dependence on oil and utilizing other revenue sources. The members also encouraged the federal government to take advantage of InfraCOP, the private sector driven infrastructural vehicle, to reduce fiscal pressures and prevent tax increases on the already burdened private and household sector. The MPC did not discuss the federal government's massive dependence on ways and means, that is, borrowing from the CBN, which grew significantly in the past few years. The next MPC meeting will hold on the 21st and 22nd of March, where we believe the MPC will maintain its supportive stance until the economy returns to pre-COVID levels. The CBN can apply other policy tools to guide interest rates in the fixed income market and sustain the use of moral suasion to nudge banks to lend to the real sector. Thank you for listening. Please join us same time next week for another exciting and insightful session. For comments and feedback, kindly forward to CC Radio at rccgchristchurch.org or send SMS to 70 Stay blessed.